Welcome to Educate, Inform, and Challenge. My name is Teresa McLennan. I'm Executive Director of the Women and Children's Shelter of Barrie. We are so glad that you, our community, are here with us in our conversation today. As you know, the uh, purpose of our show is to talk about the lives and experiences of women. We talk about human trafficking, women experiencing violence. We also talk about women in positions of leadership, politics, business, and who are making a difference in the communities uh, that they live in. And so we are always grateful that our community comes alongside us and, um, you know, that we can educate and inform and challenge each other together. Before we begin, we do want to acknowledge and thank our Indigenous community. We thank you so much for allowing us to share in this space, to have these conversations. We want to learn and we want to grow together. And we thank you for your culture, your history. That education is meaningful to all of us. So thank you. So today I'm really looking forward to our conversation. We're going to be speaking with Deborah McGrath. And Deborah has a lot of skills and talents that I think we're all going to benefit from learning about. And she's also a very community-minded woman. And She's someone that we should get to know a little bit more. And so we're going to dive into our conversation. Welcome, Deborah. It is really nice to talk with you today. Thanks for the invitation, Teresa. I'm really looking forward to having this conversation. Great. So, Deborah, I know that you wear a lot of hats in the community. I mean, many of us uh, always do. Can you just let us know a little bit more about you and all of those hats that you wear? Absolutely. And, and thank you for asking the question. I think many women wear many hats. When it comes to volunteerism, I can tell you a little bit about what I have been involved with in the past. I've been in Innisfil for about 19 years, coming up on 20 years next year. And I think I dove in with, with both feet, Teresa, because I saw a need, first of all, to establish a Toastmasters Club here in Innisfil. We just celebrated our eighth anniversary. So that was a, that was a labor of love, getting that going. Uh, as of July the 1st, I will have been a Toastmasters member for 23 years. So that really was a, a passion and a purpose. I am past president of a local ratepayers association called the Innisfil District Association. I've been involved with the Alzheimer's Society of Simcoe County as a volunteer for 15 years. That again is a passion project of mine. And I've been involved in municipal elections as a moderator and facilitator, 100 debates on the environment, uh, a bit of an environmentalist. And I have been involved as well with the Town of Innisfil Remembrance Day ceremonies for the last few years. So there's there's quite a few honours there and a lot of time spent in this community, which has given me great joy. And uh, in a little while, we're going to just talk about why that is meaningful for you to be so active and such a participant in your community. But before we get there, I'd like to talk a little bit more about your public speaking and Toastmasters. So, you know, I think for many of us, public speaking can be challenging and there's a lot of hurdles that, uh, you know, we kind of need to work through. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that for most folks, public speaking is something that, you know, we try to avoid as much as we can. There is so much fear around public speaking, Teresa. We're, we're two exceptions, of course, and there are many of them. There are lots of old, you know, memes and, and expressions about, you know, two things that we fear the most, death and taxes and public speaking. That would be three things, in fact. I think it stems from our exposure to public speaking. I know they teach it in schools, perhaps not as, as much as it should be taught. When you get to be an adult and you have not had that training in school, then I think the fear really sets in because you, you have no, you really have no groundwork. So Toastmasters, and there, there are lots of programs out there, Toastmasters is coming up on 100 years. They've been doing this since 1924. So they have this, they have this program down pat by now. It, it really is the best core program for teaching public speaking skills. 
I joined, as I said, 23 years ago, I had a corporate career, a friend of mine said, come on out, you'll meet a wonderful supportive group of people that will take you through the next stage of your life. I was starting my own company at that point, And I thought I was a pretty good public speaker. Guess what? I was not that great, Teresa. I learned more, my elevator speech, I learned more in the first couple of years in Toastmasters than I did in all the corporate training programs. And I had worked for, for a major, in this case, uh, CBC Television Marketing and Sales, a major broadcaster. And I thought I knew a lot about public speaking, but I did not. Toastmasters gives you the core skills, the confidence, the mentoring, and the training to move forward. And now, 23 years later, I can say that the hurdles, the biggest hurdles for becoming a public speaker really come down to training. So let's talk more about that. I'm curious, how did you see your skills and abilities start to change uh, as you became involved with Toastmasters? Well, as I said, I thought I had the skills until I stood up in a group of my peers. And again, these are safe learning spaces. Most Toastmasters clubs will say that. This is a safe learning space. You can fall flat on your face if you, if you have to, and you will be lifted back up again. The, the three things I learned was, was comfort and confidence and courage. Those did not come quickly or easily. Again, I had to learn the core skills. You learn that in the first 10 speeches that you deliver. And the comfort then comes from there and the confidence, you, you start to wear that a little more, more comfortably. And then you develop the courage. When somebody says, I, I need a speaker, or I need help, or I need an MC, or uh, it's taken me so many different directions, Teresa. I have, I have facilitated, uh, eulogies. I've written eulogies and presented celebrations of life and memorial services. I never would have done that in my corporate career without Toastmasters training. That confidence, that courage, and that comfort yeah. really makes a difference. I'm, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this, Deborah. So, I mean, a lot of people think that, well, if I just have the right words to say, that I'll be fine to get up and, and say what it is that I need to say. Is it about just the right words or is it about the nuances the movements the tone all of those other inflections like give us some tips here to really help us right because i you know some people may think that well you know i, I know my stuff so i should be able to speak to it but then mm -hmm. they go in front of people and they have to speak and all of a sudden the words just aren't coming right I actually teach a course called the top 10 tips. Okay. And then another 10 tips for speaking. The top 10 tips come from Toastmasters and I've added another 10 tips. And I'm going to give you three right now. And they're all no's, but not the N-O. They are the K-N-O-W. Know your material. Know your stuff. That's the first step. Know your audience. Who are you speaking to? And then know your room. And I'm talking about physically knowing your room. I remember competing many years ago, Toastmasters has contests now just once a year, but way back it was twice a year. And I competed in a, in a contest called Table Topics. You literally stick your hand into a hat, you pick out a topic, you have two minutes to prepare, and then you have to deliver a comprehensive, a comprehensive speech, one to two minutes, with an opening, a body, and a close. 2007, been in Toastmasters for six years. Somehow I found myself on the district stage, and I'm competing. I don't know how I did it, but what I had done before I got to the stage was I walked up on the stage. And I realized that that was a huge space and the stairs were kind of creaky and they were kind of noisy. So I physically walked up on the stage and then I looked out at the room before anybody 
filed in. There were 400 people in that room that day. Before anybody filed in, I put myself in that space and imagined what it would be like. But I also had that physical experience of walking up the stage, walking to the center, and then speaking into the crowd. Do you want to know what happened? What happened? I won. You won. I won. Just six years after, just barely six years after I joined. And I hated table topics. Who loves talking about something they know nothing about until maybe two minutes before you have to speak? Those are the types of skills that Toastmasters teaches you. And that's the confidence, the comfort, the courage, all of that. But knowing your audience, knowing your message, knowing your stuff, and knowing so much more. I've got tons of ideas and tips, Teresa, really. And it comes down to, to really knowing your stuff. You can put the words together, but when you deliver them, Toastmasters looks for many things. They look for gestures. They look for a colorful voice. Think about, think about who you like to listen to or think about speakers or, or singers. If you have a colorful voice, people will more likely listen to your message. And there are many other tips and techniques, Teresa, far too many to go into right now, but those are my three no's. Know your stuff, know your audience, and know your space. And I think, you know, we'll have some more space to talk a little bit more, uh, you know, and, and maybe interweave some more of those uh, tips into our conversation. I'm learning a lot. I, uh, uh, you know, I'm very appreciative of any of the tips to the trade, you know, that you can offer me. I, I do a lot of public speaking, of course, you know, hosting uh, our Educate Inform Challenge program here, right? And certainly I feel like for myself, the more I speak, um, the more um, polished, the more of a craft it becomes for me. Uh, you know what I mean? And I, I never liked public speaking at all. And like you're talking about in high school, you're forced to write a speech about something. And uh, I think for most of us, we probably dreaded that piece of school mm -hmm. and uh, myself included. And now I would say one of the most enjoyable parts of the position that I have here as the uh, executive director of the shelter is speaking to groups of people. Uh, the larger, it doesn't really matter the size anymore for me. And I receive great joy in um, public speaking, talking about the work that we do here because I'm passionate about it, talking about the team that I work with. And uh, I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. I never thought in my life I would ever say those words. And so maybe just for anybody who's listening, who is in the throes of having to do some public speaking, it does get better and you could really start to enjoy it. So we are going to continue this conversation with Deborah. We're going to learn a lot more about Toastmasters and some more uh, tips of the trade, but we're also going to learn more about Deborah and just her community spirit and giving back and where that comes from and the things that she's involved in. So Please stay with us. We're just going to take a very short break and we will be right back.
Welcome back to Educate, Inform, and Challenge. Again, my name is uh, Teresa McLennan, Executive Director of the Women and Children's Shelter here in Barrie. And we are having a very uh, great conversation, an educational conversation with Deborah McGrath, who is the VP of Membership for Toastmasters in Innisfil. And we are, I am, learning a lot of great information about public speaking and just, you know, some very quick learns that we can all uh, adapt and use in our everyday life. So Deborah, welcome back. And I, I want to just pick right back up to our conversation. So if someone ha is faced with, oh my goodness, I've taken on a new job and a part of that is public speaking and I'm not feeling confident. I don't feel like I have the skills. They reach out to Toastmasters because they're looking for some support. What can they expect? What would the process look like to become involved with Toastmasters? Thanks for asking, Teresa. We get people inquiring all the time and we are a, what we call a small but mighty club in Innisfil. We were founded in 2015. I'm co-founder of the club. I, again, have been a member of Toastmasters International since July the 1st, 2001. And it has taught me, I've been a member of four different clubs now, and it has taught me so much about public speaking and about just developing the, the, the skills to feel comfortable taking on different roles, whether it's volunteerism, whether it's mediating or moderating or facilitating. I would never have in a million years dreamed about doing that before I became a member of Toastmasters. What someone can expect when they walk through the doors, first of all, is a hello, welcome. You're in the right place and a comfortable, safe space to learn. We had a, in 2001, year I joined, we had a world champion public speaker named Darren Lacroix. And his world champion public speak, speech, rather, he literally delivered it almost face down on the stage. He lay down on the stage to illustrate that you can fall flat on your face and you can get back up again in a Toastmasters club because you will be supported. You can't fail. If you put the work in, you will develop the skills for communication and leadership that you need to accomplish your goal. We've had people come in who simply want to deliver a speech at their daughter's or son's wedding. Can you help me with that? Yes, we can. I'm doing, as you mentioned, more public speaking in my corporate role. Can you help me with that? Yes, we can. Can you help me build more confidence? I'm starting my own company. Yes, we can. So no matter what your agenda is, when you walk through that door, you're like everyone else who walked through that door, including me. You have a set of skills you come in with, and then we help you build on that and perhaps build new ones or develop new ones. And then you get a chance to deliver speeches. And the program is called Pathways in Toastmasters. You do a self-evaluation. You figure out which path is the best. There are almost a dozen of them now. I have been working on presentation mastery. I'm just about finished that pathway. And you can work your way through all the way through to, it's kind of like the Olympics, Teresa. Uh, it used to be bronze, silver, gold, and then distinguished toastmaster. I am a distinguished toastmaster. It took me quite a while to get there. I worked at my own speed. And that's the other thing about Toastmasters. It is a self-propelled, self-driven program. You work at your own speed. There's so much learning here about Toastmasters that I never knew before. And I, I just think it's very interesting and so helpful because I just, when I'm listening to you, I think in everyday life, the skill set that you would learn from participating in Toastmasters, you may not be somebody who is going to be doing a lot of public speaking, but just conversing with other people, stopping, listening, pacing yourself in conversations, all of those wonderful skills in just being able to converse 
uh, in front of other people, but with other people as well. Like it just seems so transferable, transferable skills. I think that's what I'm thinking in everyday life. I, th I think it is absolutely amazing, right? And so how long is a typical time that someone would be involved in the Toastmasters program? People cycle in and out. It's a great question, Teresa. People cycle in and out. They accomplish their goal and they may move on. Some people are in it for life. Uh, I remember meeting one of my first meetings. I met a lady named Jane Eves. I will never forget her as long as I live. She took one look at me, listened to me and said, oh, you're a lifer. You're going to be in this for life. And I think that's the thing about the program. You get out of it, like any other program, you get out of it, what you get out of it, what you put into it. And you can, as I say, accomplish your goal and move on, or you can decide to give back. And that's what I'm doing now is giving back, mentoring, training, encouraging as vice president, vice president membership. I'm certainly trying to build membership in the club because I see and know full well the value and the benefits of Toastmasters. It has taken me a very long time to accomplish the things that I wanted to accomplish. And I'm probably going to work on a second DTM and maybe even a third. But the point is that as I continue in the program, I am continuing to learn. And that I think is, is like any other program. As long as you're learning and you're laughing and you're having fun, you're gonna stick with something. So to that note, you were talking about, you know, you're in the, the spot now where you really are involved and you're giving back and you're participating Toastmasters. I also know that you are someone who participates in her community and that that's very important to you. Can you maybe just talk to us about your com that community participation and the things that just speak to your heart and that you're involved in? I think... I think the biggest involvement I've had over the last, consistently over the last 15 years is with the Alzheimer's Society of Simcoe County. I became a volunteer in, I think it was 20, 2009, I'll have to double check. It's probably been about 2009. My mother-in-law was diagnosed with dementia uh, or related Alzheimer's disease and related dementia as they used to call it. And I wanted to, A, support my father-in-law and, and, of course, my, my late mother-in-law. She passed away in 2010 from complications due to, the, due to the disease. My very first role with the Alzheimer's Society was on a Friday afternoon at the local beer store with a, a fundraising event called Tag Days. I don't know if you remember that, but there used to be volunteers standing there with little boxes and you could come and put your money into the box and, and I'd give you a tag and off you'd go. That was an eye-opener. That was a real eye-opener. I did several Tag Days. Uh, I participated in Coffee Break. That was another program, another fundraising program. Now they are concentrating most of their efforts on the inter, uh, sorry, the um, IG wealth management walk for memories. That's that's the biggest goal right now. That's coming up at the end of May, Teresa, and that that to me is is really my passion to give back to an organization that gave me so much, and certainly my my family and my in laws so much. It's one of the, I've said this many times, one of the most undervalued, underfunded organizations. And this year we're asking people to walk 11,500 steps for the 11,500 people living in Simcoe County with dementia. 
And it is such a wonderful organization that does incredible work. Um, I had the pleasure the privilege of uh, speaking with Anne-Marie Kungel, who's the executive director of the Alzheimer's Society of Simcoe County. And she was talking about the upcoming walk as well. And we really do encourage and hope that our community will rally uh, around and beside that agency that does really incredible work. And there is a very wide breadth of programs and services that that agency offers as well. And so we encourage anyone who's listening right now who may have a family member or have some questions or concerns about their own health uh, to give them a call. And so, uh, again, just a wonderful organization and a really good one to support so Deborah, let's talk about why is it important for folks to become involved in their community? What do you get from being involved? Very good question, Teresa. I think the reason it is so deeply embedded in me and Canadian author Robertson Davies wrote a book once called Bread in the Bone. It is bread in the bone. I mentioned earlier, I'm a granddaughter of two World War I vets and a daughter of two World War II vets who thankfully never saw active service. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. And that, you know, I grew up watching my grandmother volunteer. I grew up watching my mother volunteer. And I think giving back to a community in many ways, it's about reciprocity. Now, some people are a bit taken aback by that word. Reciprocity, when you give, there is a, a physical and psychological benefit to volunteering. And that kind of joy, that kind of rush, that kind of involvement is something that helps feed my soul and my psyche and my, my whole body. I love volunteering and I have the time to do it and I have the privilege to do it because it is a privilege and an honor in many organizations to be able to give back. And I think for many people, it's, it's the, the barrier may be just time. It may be time. And I appreciate that not everyone has the time to do it. I've had the time, I ran my own business. I still run my own business and that I fit that in because it is so vitally important to me. It's just part of who I am, Teresa. And I encourage people who've never volunteered before, give it five minutes, give it 10 minutes, give it an hour, give it whatever you have. There are so many organizations calling out for volunteers, crying for volunteers right now. As you well know, I'm preaching to the choir. It's, uh, it's, it's something that is, as I say, bread in the bone. Boy, I think that those are wonderful words, Deborah. And uh, I know, I know that your words of wisdom are going to be speaking to so many of our viewers. And you know, I like to ask this question: if um, if there's a young woman who's watching today and she's just looking for some encouraging words from a woman such as yourself, a woman leader, a woman who has taken life and ran with it and and done incredible things. What words of encouragement would you offer to that young girl? Three things. Find a mentor. Own your story, no matter what it is. And tell your story. Find a way to tell it. Because everyone has value and everyone is important. I think that is the perfect place for us to put a pin in this conversation. And I hope that we'll be able to have another conversation in the future, Deborah. Thank you so, Thanks. so much. Thank you to our community for just joining us in this great conversation today. Please take care of uh, yourself, take care of each other, and we will see you here again next time on Educate, Inform, and Challenge. Bye-bye.